Hey everybody, thank you for uh, watching this video. This is an interview with a cool guy that I met named um, Jay Paul. A guy I met as a passenger, he's a true renaissance man, he had a lot of creative hobbies, including bartending, including carpentry, including um, just being uh, smart and cool with materials and, and photography. Photography is a big one. So we have a, a, a conversation. Now I just wanna let you know the audio quality is not great because I use the microphone on my camera. Now, I do have um, these uh, lavalier microphones I want to get along with these little recorders, portable recorders, and um, I will be getting those, but if you want me to get them faster to get better, really high quality recordings, because they're very good microphones, then what I will need from you is to support me. Now, there are a couple ways in the description of this video. Uh, Number one, which doesn't, which doesn't cost anything extra on your part, if you are going to buy something on Amazon, use my affiliate link. It's very simple, very easy. Click on the link, anything you buy within 24 hours, as long as I'm the only link you clicked on, or at least on the most recent affiliate link you clicked on. You click on my video and then you click on somebody else's uh, link, then um, they get the commission. But if you click on my link last, you buy anything within 24 hours from Amazon. Once it ships, I get a percentage. You pay the same price. Easiest way to support me. If you want extra stuff like videos 24 hours early or um, a shipment in your first month of handmade things from yours truly, then go to the Patreon and subscribe to a monthly uh, patron uh, donation thing. Uh, so. That will be a thing. I, I appreciate I, I appreciate you if you do that. I appreciate you if you don't, but it really helps me get equipment uh, sooner and to be able to support the podcast myself, etc. So uh, that's a big thing. And there's also, and if you are a sponsor of some sort, uh, if you have uh, some kind of product or something that you want to um, make a deal with me, like for a 30 second spot or 60 second spot, uh, feel free to email me. Everything on that is in the description below, and I'm excited to show you the interview. Oh, also, how did I forget? At the end of this video, there is detail, there are details on the launch giveaway, so stay tuned, and if you want to be part of the launch giveaway, then uh, listen to that closely, and I'm excited to see you soon. about where I went. This is my house. So I just went upstairs. Um, but it's also got like hopeful bond stuff. So you're supposed to put the rest in your beard. Hmm. Put some on if you like. Have you uh, got any compliments with this? 
Uh, I haven't used it much. I haven't gone out since I've used it. Really? Yeah, you just put it there, put it there, you know, wherever you put cologne on, behind the ears, on your neck, whatever. I like the scent. Yep. The cologne I typically use is a sweet tobacco, which I really mm. love. Is that from Spitfire Girl? No, from 1821. Okay, because I saw Spitfire, Spitfire Girl in a local, P, uh, local brand, I think Houston based, but they have a lot of places around here, a lot of um, like manufacturing thing. And I actually emailed that guy, he wants to be an interview too. Nice. Yeah, I nice. know. So, I met them at Armadillo Art Bazaar. Really? Yeah. Well, that's a much, I would guess you would meet somebody that you want to interview there. I met like guessing about Uber. Yeah, I met like five. Where? Where? Yeah. I actually meet a lot of interviewees on Uber. And then a lot of them are just, you know, there. So yeah. Do you ever do the interviews in the vehicle? No, I should do that. I need to get a dash cam. Yeah, yeah, I figure like, you know, that one guy on TV does the karaoke in the car type thing. My friend got me, I love karaoke. Oh, I love karaoke boy too. game nights. Fuck yeah. So, speak well, of the yeah. devil. Speak of the fucking devil. Well, I, I used to, I used to do karaoke, do one. karaoke about like five nights a week. But yeah. I'm good. I don't know all the songs that are popular. But so I don't even know how to play this game. I've never played it before. I'm down. <laughs> Shout out yeah. to Rex, who you'll only know if you know me. Uh, but he's the one who gave me this, so thank you, Rex. Christmas gift? Or yes. Rip. I'm nice. Jewish, so Hanukkah gift. Hey. I have no idea how to do it, but we'll just... um. I think we'll just do a couple rounds because I want to talk about creative stuff. Uh, so you spin this, I don't know what rocket means, and then you have to pick a card, like this says, sing a song in the style of Adam Sandler. Oh my god. And then I guess I have to guess it, maybe? <laughs> I don't know if I have to guess it. But we'll this just... could be very, uh, <clears throat> and then guess embarrassing. it. Yeah, then <laughs> guess it and work it. Word. And so like, work it, I'm guessing dancing. Well, it, it depends. Work your best Let's Superman see. moves. Work my best Superman moves into the... I gotta Obviously really know songs. Yeah. Yeah. Damn. yeah. Uh, oh, this could be challenging. Ooh, I feel butterflies. Now that's funny. Which artist asked Apple CEO Tim Cook to correct the way that Siri pronounced their name? A. Barbara Streisand. B. David Guetta. C. Nicole Scherzinger. Or D. Kesha with dollar sign. Mm. I'm gonna just guess C. It's actually Barbara Streisand. Wow. I didn't well, know that. I thought she was a cook. Like, oh, wow. I yeah. thought Barbara Streisand was a cook. I thought she was a singer. I'm thinking about a cropper. She's probably, I mean, she's a singer because obviously it's in this question. Yeah, yeah. But I, I'm thinking of Betty Crocker, I think. I don't know. All right, spin it. She's also Barbara Walters. Work it. Work it. <laughs> if you want to just do a guess it, that would make more sense because I don't know what song. I don't know yeah. how to play this. Yeah, me neither. Now let's just, let's just do a couple questions each then. During her episode, Adele shares that she's playing drums on which song? Okay. A, when we were young. B, rolling in the deep. I already read this card, so. You did? Yeah, so next card, please. Okay, word. Yeah, just because I read that card. Word. Yeah. Miley Cyrus feels a little out of place in. I, I already read that one too. Just, just go halfway through it. Yeah, okay, word. There you go. Elton John okay, I don't put this one. down a lot of words for your song, including yours are the blank eyes I've ever seen. A, roundest. Uh huh. B, deepest. C, bluest. D, sweetest. I'm gonna say D, sweetest. That's correct. Woo I didn't have to look at that one. Thank you. All right, so then I'll, I'll ask you a question. Uh, I want one that I know, or at least that I have some kind of idea I can connect to. Here, this is interesting. Bruno Mars sang which Elvis Presley song during his episode? A. Jailhouse Rock. And this is episode of Carpet Karaoke. Okay, word. Um, A. Jailhouse Rock. 
B, love me tender. C, hound dog. And D, blue suede shoes. I actually used to have blue suede shoes. So I haven't even seen this episode. Me neither. I'm gonna guess B. Love me tender? Yeah. It was A, Jailhouse Rock. Word. But I love Love Me Tender because I had I had a um an elephant that I got at a garage sale in my hometown. Mm -hmm. Hershey, Pennsylvania, which I okay. only did a few times. And it was a stuffed Elephant, and you wound it up and had a music box inside, and it would go. And it was lovely tender, and you hear the rest of the And so that, that, I don't know what happened to it, but that was very special. Interesting. Every time I think of love me tender, I think of Paul Anka. Love me, woman tender, dear. You're a singer. Sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry for being so talented. <laughs> Making you feel bad about yourself. No, I'm a singer too, but I can't do that. I'm impressed. Paul Anka was like, my dad played oldies all the time. Yes. And so like growing up, all I listened to was old shit. So I knew the old shit, and Paul Anka was one of those older artists that did those kind of like older singing for the ladies, crooner type stuff. Nice. Yeah. That sounds like that song. It's very much a um, singing for the ladies. But I never would have thought Elvis for Love Me Tender. I think it's a totally different song. Oh, that's, that's an Elvis song. Yeah. It's, it's a good Elvis song. I like it. Right. And it reminds me of that elephant. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so tell me about creating, like the stuff you do, creation-wise. In the, in the past, I used to just create mainly abstract pieces. It could be okay. drawings, it could be clay, um, ceramics. I got into pottery in college for oh, a while. Sure. Um, so you could, mentioned that. It sure. could be like bowls, it could be cups, or it could be something as interesting as, you know, a three foot tall kind of just really raw sculpture. Mm. Um, and I'm thinking of one in particular I made. It was about three foot tall, and it was kind of mm. two pieces that were connected at the bottom disconnected in the middle and came back and connected at the top mm. and it was made by coiling clay around in rings and just kept on coiling all the way up and nice. then smooth parts of the sides and yeah. then put like different hieroglyphics on the side of it. Were you nervous when you put it in the oven? Were you worried it would not come out right? I didn't care. You didn't care? Yeah. It was just one of those things where I wouldn't yeah, have to not care. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, w I didn't get too attached. Mm. I don't get too attached to my pieces. I kind of just let them be, let them take on their own type of life. Yeah, that, that was the kind of creative person I was then. Nowadays, I feel like I put a lot of structure into what I create. Mm -hmm. I feel like I try to find a purpose. Mm. I, find, I try to find a reason as to why I'm creating something. Otherwise, I could just create and create and create and yeah. create and feel like I've created a lot. Is it like utilitarian? Is it like, I want to make something so that I have an incense holder? Or I want to make something so that I could put it on the wall right there. It, it's like more that. of the first one. It's more okay. of like I want, like I, I took that reclaimed wood from uh, a fence. Yeah. I installed a new fence. I took the old fence wood from a client's property. Mm. I made myself a dining room table, coffee table, two nightstands, a bookcase, and a mud bench. Nice. So it's like I'd rather do that. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't need to like carve into the wood. The wood looks fine the way it is. Mm -hmm. It's all like old, rustic. It's got some moss in different places. It's got stains from different things mm -hmm. that have happened. It's got some graffiti. So cool. like that That's to cool me shit. is what I try to focus my creative um, juices towards. Yeah. You know, but it's like, oh, I'm going to make something useful. Yeah, and like the wood naturally has like little divots and holes mm -hmm. in it. So when I'm burning incense, I just stick it in one of those holes. Oh, shit. I don't even need an incense holder. I had a, uh, 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 actually, if you guys are watching these, check Chris Long. He gave me this incense holder of pottery in, uh, in town. Actually, let me burn some incense. I found one, you know. Yeah. Uh, old school with matches. Nice. My butane torch, uh, recently crapped out. I got it for, like, five bucks from a gas station, so. For sure. It. It, it did the trick while you had it. Yeah. Yeah. I love doing this. When it works. 
Not that. <laughs> when it works, it's so cool, though. There we go. Yeah, it's not do this at home. Or, just kidding, do it if you want. I mean, I'm not responsible if you have For instance. Disclaimer. Yeah. Um, but he's a potter in, in um, Austin that does this, like, okay, photography work. type work. And he's actually had a lot of markets. Nice. Um, yeah, I guess you can see his stuff in... He, he does, I saw his stuff at recent markets, he changes what he does, but that's one of the things that I think is still on his newer stuff, but not everything. As a, as a photographer as well, I do a lot of like traveling into the wilderness type nice. stuff, and a lot of just exploring different landscapes, and so I'm used to like seeing the topography on maps and charts yeah. and things like that, so I, I, I would appreciate that. Yeah, I actually asked him if those were real places, he said no, he just made it up. Eh. yeah. But that would be something, um, if you want, he has mugs and things like that. Right. What's the price range? I think, um, this was just a gift, but I think it was like $30, something like that. I think it's 25 or 30 And like That's a mug bad. is like 25 or 30 That's not bad at all. Yeah, yeah. He has a kiln in his place, um, right. and he just, you know, he's also in art, uh, he's in bands, so like he makes money through the band. Right. Sort of thing, so. Yeah. Sounds like a chill lifestyle. Yeah, Austin is a really cool place to meet a lot of people like that. Oh, for sure, for sure. That's why I love living here. I came here partially for the art community. Why am I throw, throwing it away from me? I kind of I want that. <laughs> right, right. But like, I'm just used to blowing smoke away. Right. So you don't smoke at all? No, but somebody left a jewel in my car. And as you can see over there, I hacked a, um, um, a micro USB charger. Oh, yeah. And uh, I looked on YouTube. You can, um, I'll like cut. A, a shot of that in the YouTube video um, for, for B roll and that part yeah, or whatever. Yeah. But um, yeah, I, took, I, I stripped them. You can just put those, and there's four leads. I don't know what those two middle ones are for, probably like ground or something. But you can put one on one side and the other on the other side. Ground. Exactly. It doesn't matter which one is I which guess. somehow. Mm -hmm. It's like, it doesn't matter which positive or which negative. You just put That's one cool. on one side and one on the other side, and um, it charges. So you're going to sell it? No, I'll probably use it. Okay, word. I'm I'm okay with vaping. Um, smoking, I only do if it's uh, something that um, you can guess. But the, I don't want to admit to on you. Yeah, it's all good. <laughs> yeah. Which I obviously don't do that. So, not until it's legal. Once it's legal, I'll do it. I don't know what you're talking about. Me neither. I smoke <laughs> this. Look how look at that. Look how it's like it's two trails right? of smoke. That's so yeah. Cool. I don't know why it's so even. Probably. That was something I saw somebody do. Like you can see how, well I can see it from this angle, the smoke isn't really like disconnected. It's got like two main pillars and then it's got like kind of like a sheet of smoke in between the two. Oh, okay, so when it's coming at my face, it looks like it's just two trails, but it's like right. probably like a U. Yeah. And then the air yeah. is slightly moving. There's probably like very little. Yeah. Because there's, I don't have the AC on or a fan or anything, so it's probably only a slight movement that way. Opening. There or something, or maybe just the temperature gradient of, or maybe just like how it's heated. Maybe it's unevenly heated there, which is why it's curving that way or something. Could be. I don't know. There's a lot of reasons, and I'm not a physicist. I don't know thermodynamics very well. I don't know anything. That's so cool. How it's just, you see how it's just going like that? Yeah. The convection currents on the edges. That's so cool. I. This is why people meditate with candles sometimes, or an incense smoke. So I've seen different things. photographers do projects where they do um, time lapse photography projects with the smoke. Damn, that would be cool. Kind of just creates its own little project, kind of like when people take little sticks and yeah. do time lapse photography and like spell things out or yeah. draw pictures. Yeah, that would be really cool. Oh, you mean like like not like like picture 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 picture, but like no, shutter times and like long exposure, five minutes or yeah. something. Yeah. Yeah. And really, really dark. That'd be cool. That'd be really cool. I don't even know if it has to be dark. Because if it's too dark, how are you going to see the smoke? You know what I mean? That's a good point. I guess that you could adjust it afterwards. Yeah. In Photoshop. Hail Photoshop. Hail Adobe. So, what are your subjects when you um, photograph things? Mm. I feel like you want some. My photography usually. Yeah. Um, I guess the wind's blowing that way. Yeah, because it's definitely has nothing to do with the orientation yeah. of that. Yeah. <laughs> um, my my interest is more capturing what's already happening, capturing life as it is. I don't really like to edit mm -hmm. these days. Like back then, I was into Photoshop. I was into you know trying to 
create something on the other end. Nowadays, mm -hmm. it's like, yeah, I'll sometimes do portraits of people. Sometimes mm -hmm. I'll do like um, headshots for people if they're trying to apply mm -hmm. as an actor, if they're like new to the whole acting thing. I've yeah. done that before. I've done behind the scenes photos for like amateur movies here in Austin. But mainly, I'm more into photojournalism. I like mm -hmm. to capture something that I feel needs awareness drawn to it and then find a mm -hmm. way to get that into the hands of somebody to use it. But most of the time, anything I feel needs awareness drawn to it, I don't want to be attached to. Mm -hmm. So yeah. you usually don't put your name on it? It's usually anonymous. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so you, you give it, you take, say there's um, some injustice happening with the homeless population in Austin. Could be that. You'll take uh, photos and then get it to a journalist and be like, I am nobody, but here's what's happening. So it's typically not um, the homeless situation because that's in your face most every day. Yeah. Like, there's no way to avoid that unless you avoid 6th Street. You're not just saying it because counters. you don't yeah. want us to see your photos. <laughs> no, no. Mine, mine is more interested in environmental okay. things that are happening, like people releasing chemicals into the water, mm -hmm. different things where people, like, if I point out homelessness, mm -hmm. I don't mind my face being attached to that, mm -hmm. because there's nobody, like, that's going to mm -hmm. be mad about me and, okay. like, want to do anything to me. But if I'm speaking out against a multi-million dollar, billion dollar company mm -hmm. for something they're doing, and my photos can actually have an impact on mm -hmm. their company, then I've got a target on my back. Yeah. Nobody gives a fuck about the homeless population enough to do something to me about it. Yeah. But a company gives a fuck enough about to do something. For safety reasons. For safety reasons. For my own safety. Smart. Yeah. And safety if I ever have a family. I'm single, no kids, but if I ever had a family, I don't yeah. want something I do in my youth yeah. to affect them later on. Yeah. Well, of course. Yeah. yeah. I, I um. I'm watching Narcos, so yeah. <laughs> yeah. I can totally understand where you're coming from. Yeah. Um, and I've heard stories of things happening to people. Other, other than that, like the, the positive side, like those are the kind of yeah. like the negative things I, I raise awareness for. I also raise awareness for positive things. I'll That's take cool. pictures of like more modern, hippie, new age, open-minded individuals doing gatherings and throwing mm. parties, like healthy parties, where mm. it's like it's not about the substances, so yeah. much as it is about authentic relating yeah. and like intuitive interactions between individuals. So you do authentic relating games. I've done that before. Yeah, I've heard of those. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, my friends, well, a couple friends keep telling me I should go into them. Have you heard of the Mankind Project? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I've been to a couple of the meetings. Oh, cool. Sure. I'm uh, one of those. I go to one of those every other week. Cool yeah. shit. Something that you might want to be a part of. Yeah, I've, uh, I got. I used to go to one every other Thursday night. Um, River City Warriors. I'm not sure which one it was. Okay, was it on 12th Street in Chicago? Might have been. Okay, might have been. It's like a sober bar. Yep. Okay, well, River City Warriors. Yeah, yeah. I went there a couple times. Um, my friend George. Hello, George. Okay. Word. Oh, I know George. Yeah. What? Word. You're friends with George. Yeah. Yeah. And if you ask him about me, hello. Okay, cool. Yeah, I, um, I met with him. Um, I met him. He was doing a show at mm -hmm. Andrews Warehouse. I don't know if you've been yeah. there. Yeah, I haven't been there, but I saw on Facebook. Word. So, so I was, I was the, the guy in the kilt. Oh, okay. I wasn't looking. Okay, word. Like, I mean, I was looking, but like I wasn't. Yeah, yeah. I don't have the images burned into my mind. Uh, that's fine. It was, it was like, a, like, oh, that's George. And I was a play about, like, about different things. And one of the guys in that play, I know him, yeah. David Lawler. I don't know if you know him. No. Um, he was doing represent like the whole performance was each person, including George and the other individual, they were depicting their own lives in a certain aspect. He, went, he sent me some. Um, he he sent me some um, voice snippets. Okay, word uh, from that. Word. And, uh, yeah, he was like, "Oh, here's a play I'm doing about my life." I'm like, "Cool." Yeah. I'm like, "That's awesome." Yeah. I and I was like, "I need to hear more about your process because it was." Yeah, yeah, and I was interested in working with him, like, but David was the one that got me there. I didn't know yeah. George before that. Okay. So I met George at that event. Gotcha. Yeah, but David was doing, like, a depiction of his life type of thing, and he needed somebody to represent his Irish heritage, and I... Well, you're left. I, I happen to have a kilt, and I happen to be Irish, so... And I have a lot of red hair. Yeah. And if I were to guess, I would say you're Irish. Yeah. Well, but Scandinavian. Mm. Dutch. Yeah. Okay. What would you guess for me? 
Well, you already said Jewish. Okay, so that's a good point. As far as like actual like root heritage, um, yeah, I'm just gonna check on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everything's going all right. Everything's going okay. I'm gonna not be in some of it. I think. Could you could you see where my where my head is where my face is just so I know if I'm in? Oh yeah, yeah, for sure. I'm not sure if I'm on. I'm probably on the edge, but I don't know if I'm in. in. You're in it. All yeah, right. but it's it's cutting off the back of your head. Like All it right. shows your ears and everything. There you go. You're totally in it now. Great. Yeah. Perfect. It's about you anyway, so it's not a big deal. I'm not. Um, I want to say parts of Europe for sure, but I want to say like I don't know. Part of me wants to say like. I'm not really, I'm not really that experienced as far as like what people look like from different locales. Mm. So it's kind of hard for me to like guess where your family's history is from. Okay. Like I feel like if I looked at me, I'd say, oh, that guy might be Irish yes. or English or something like that. I would say Irish, Ireland or Scotland. Yeah, yeah. I hope I said that in a good accent. I'm working on it. If I say like more things than that, then I sound Russian. I tried to do an Irish accent or a Scottish accent. I've tried to do an Irish accent in the past, and like there was a guy I was talking to one time in an Irish accent, what I thought was an Irish accent. He was like, you, "You're Scottish." <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, "Is there a difference?" There's a big difference. Yeah, I know. I know. Apparently, Irish sounds like a mid uh, Midwest accent, but you do different things with the R's. It's like, "Don't you know?" And it's like, "Don't you know?" I don't know. I can't do it. Fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> ah, shit. That's a noise. I'm not good with an Irish accent. We're, I can do a lot of other accents and full locals. Uh, people have actually said that my British accent, um, they're wondering where I'm from in Britain, and that's actually people who are British asking that. So uh, I feel really good about that one, and I've never been there, so it makes me feel even better that I'm watching Doctor Who on Office. Doctor Who, we're, I was going to say Harry Potter, but. Well, I was the uh, president of Rutgers Harry Potter Club. Right. Thanks to me and my team, they're now you all here. Nice. Um, but yeah, so you've been in Austin for a couple of years? I've been in Austin for about four years. Cuatro oh, años! Yeah. Nice. Yeah. We probably talked about it in the car. There's so many things we talked about. Yeah. It was a short ride. Yeah. And it was a couple of weeks ago. So, I'm not entirely sure the due date. That was Uber ride, for sure. Mm -hmm. yeah, super short. I remember I dropped you off near Range Day. Right? I think that you dropped me off at the hotel I worked at. What hotel was it? Weston. Maybe we went through in the street. I think, so there are a couple rides. There were a couple rides that week where I picked somebody up from around here and dropped them off downtown. Mm -hmm. So I apologize if I got the place wrong. That was like the first time. Yeah. yeah, there was, um, there was one person I, yeah, I remember why I got you confused with um, the person I picked up at the Quad West. Because I dropped somebody off there, and then a couple hours later I picked him up. Word. So it stuck in my mind. Word. Yeah. But I remember, you're the one where uh, you were at one side, and then I went to that side, and you thought I was going to the other side, and so you go to the other side, and then you came to that side. Yep. Yep. <laughs> yeah, the, that's the thing about the Uber app. It's not accurate. Yep. I saw where you were going. Okay, where? See, it, it showed the original pickup place as, like, the building. Mm -hmm. And then I saw that your, like, avatar was near the leasing office. So I went to the leasing office. And you probably thought I was going to the building because I went through there and then around. Mm -hmm. And then you went to the, the building. And then I'm like, I'm at the leasing office. And then you yeah. went to the leasing office. Yeah, because it's like there's two driveways. And like, even though I choose this one, it always sends people to this one. Uh -huh. So I started walking to that one, and the leasing office is right here in yeah. the middle. So I started walking there, and by the time I got the leasing office here back here, I was like, okay. Yeah. yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. So, mediums, what do you create? I mean, we got some of the. I'm trying know, to get out of leather. Out I'm of trying leather. to get into cactus leather, leather made of apple skins. Huh. Trying to get into For moral reasons. Uh, not moral reasons. Like, no, I could, I could care less. Yeah. Kill animals. Um, I couldn't care less. 
but for me, it's more about sustainability. Okay. It, it's more about looking at the impact from what I've learned so far about you know mass producing animals mm -hmm. for slaughterhouses really and slaughter after slaughter. Me too. I really wanna. I wanna really huh. like those like Texas leather, apple skin leather, uh, mushroom leather. They're all gonna be more expensive right now because they're mm -hmm. still being like worked on and developed yeah. and things like that. But I'd rather ride the new wave of that kind of materials. You know, right now, like the mushroom leather I found, they can only produce forty to fifty meters of it every three or four months. Wow. So it's going to be more or like an orchard. Wow. So Wait, you're the rest of the apple juice out of it? No, no, I'm talking about the mushroom leather. Oh. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. No. So I thought it was apple leather. No, so they're growing like, it's a type of mycelium, it's a type of strain that they can grow in a sheet. They huh. figured it out. They can, it's they're, like, they're, it's they're, like there's the leather that companies just grows. Doing that, yeah. yeah. Is it genetically engineered, like they made it from nothing? Uh, from no, like no, it's an actual strain of huh. mushrooms, but they've, I don't know their process, but, but I'm guessing they might have grown it within a confined space and filled that space. Mm, okay. So it's not going to grow anymore, from what I understand, but it's also resistant to bacteria because it's yeah. a bacteria eating fungus. It um, <laughs> absorbs water mm -hmm. and it's tough, like mm. super tough. Like, I don't know if you've ever like dried out mushrooms before, but they mm. can be pretty tough. I bet. I've had uh, portobellos in my fridge that got free of well, fridge burn, I guess you mm -hmm. could say. And I just threw them away. You know, they smell bad. But yeah. I imagine that they're, yeah. they're tough. I mean, I have lion's mane over there. Lion's mane, um, well, mycelium, it's not the breeding bodies. But yeah, mushrooms are cool. Yeah, yeah, for sure. But I'd rather, I'd rather work with those kind of materials right now. Um, so other than that, metal. I want to get back into blacksmithing. I have my Ooh. setup in Cali, but now I'm kind of in Cali is in California. Steps. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Where in California were you? Uh, uh, LA, San Monica area. Okay. Yeah. A lot of artists back down there. Yeah. One of the uh, one of the really well known um, Hatter is over there. Right. One of the ones that uh, sets fire to the hats. So afterwards. You can set fire to the hat, and it'll um, if it's felted, it, like the little frays will just it'll be smooth after that. What? Yeah. That's interesting. It doesn't burn it. Really cool. Uh, I mean, it, it doesn't burn more than what he's intending to burn. Only if you want it to. Interesting. You have to be good at it. There's a way. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Yeah, for sure. It's kind of like have you ever seen those um, those spray paint artists on the street? Mm -hmm. And then they set fire to it, and it, it. Oh, I haven't seen that. Oh, so if you want it to dry instantly. Then you know with the solvent, there's like um, probably xylene and like really really bad for spray paint, the respirator. But xylene is an extremely uh, flammable solvent, and um, if you spray paint something that's still wet, you can light fire to it. It'll uh, spread across, look kind of like an alcohol fire, it's very similar, and it won't burn it if it's wet enough. Kind of like how if you have alcohol on your hand, like hand sanitizer, you light it on fire. As long as you go like that quickly, uh, it won't burn you. It can have it burn for like a few seconds, and then you know, if you do it for more than a few seconds, it will burn you. But yeah, the only issue, the only difference with that is that um, it's like you putting up on your skin, but only enough for it to burn for a few seconds. Right. And it's just right. whatever solvent is still in the spray paint. Right. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. It's a really cool way to end something, especially since it's half a performance. Is um, you know, the people on the street they're kind of doing a performance, so then they end it with a, with a flame. It looks really cool. Yeah. Well, I'd say what I try to use my talents for these days is to try to fix problems. Okay. Yeah, try to. I, I like designing solutions to everyday problems. So, like at the bar, mm. we're running out of shelf space for alcohol. We're getting more bottles than we have shelf space for. But it's a nice little LED lit shelf space, kind of illuminates the bottom of the bottle, mm. makes the bottle shine, mm. which is cool. But since we're running out of space on that particular shelf, but we have space for a bigger shelf, uh -huh. I pitched the idea to them. I'm like, hey, if you guys want a bigger tiered bottle display system that yeah. still incorporates the LEDs, mm -hmm. cover materials, I'll make it. Nice. So it's, it's, it's things like that. If I see yeah. something where I feel like, okay, yeah, I see that that has a productive yeah. use of my time, and it's gonna be challenging. Mm. Yeah, you challenge. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. yeah. if I, I just sit around doing nothing,
I don't blame you. No. Yeah. <laughs> it's nice to just do the shit sometimes. Yeah, as long as like, as long as like I'm not harming anything. No, I'm not doing that to anything on YouTube. Right. Or podcast, whatever podcast yeah. channel here on this one. Um, cool. So, uh, what time is it? I don't want you to be late for work. It is 3.37. Oh. Uh, I'm not down to end it here. Usually it takes me like, the last between 30 and 45 minutes or so. Yeah. Cool shit. I'm good. Alright, it's been great. Then I'll try to get work and stuff. Let's end this. Hey, how's it going, folks and friends? Uh, welcome to the, uh, the Creators Guild podcast slash Joe Crafts YouTube channel. This is a collaboration between both of them. Thank you for watching um, slash listening. And um, I wanted to uh, give you a little bit of details about the launch giveaway. Uh, I know you guys have been waiting for that, so uh, thank you for your patience. And here we go. This, bam! The same thing that I created in the covers video. And um, I am, at, as of this, it's probably, you might be listening to this after it's released, but you might be listening to this before it's released. I also have a video about me completing the entire um, booklet here and the process for that. So uh, it's Japanese newspaper straight from Japan with a little addition from me on this uh, young lady's face. And um, great stitching, great paper. A piece of Joe Craft's history, very durable, and it lays flat on the table. It's a, it's a stitching called Coptic stitching. It can actually go backwards 360 degrees. Um, and you can see the lovely stitching on the spine. People will be asking you about this, and it's a piece of Joe Craft's history. Plus, I will be writing a, a personalized uh, thank you to you inside the journal from me, signed by me. So if you want to be in the running for that, A, be in the United States, continental or no, that's important. Uh, B, I also want three things from you. Number one, subscribe and hit the notification bell for the YouTube channel. If you're listening to this on the podcast, uh, then uh, in, the, in the episode description will be uh, a link to the video version of this uh podcast if you're listening to a podcast um then you will get this or you either an episode either an episode version or just the channel itself you will have a youtube link in the description of the podcast episode so um number one subscribe and hit the notification bell number two is subscribe to the podcast on whatever platform you choose whether if you're listening on stitcher or apple Podcasts or spotify or google Podcasts, you don't have to subscribe on all of them just subscribe on the one that you care about um, the most. So whenever you listen to it on Spotify or Apple Podcasts, listen to podcasts on that one, subscribe on that one. Um, if you don't have any of those, whatever you're listening to this on. And if you're on YouTube and you don't listen to podcasts, tough luck. It's part of the giveaway. So um, I will give you a link to the anchor.fm um, uh, main page for the podcast, which is the host of the podcast. And it will have all the links to all the platforms uh, you can subscribe on Anchor or any of the other platforms I'm on, which is all of them. Some of them are currently in review um, and will be will be uh, syndicated soon. Some of them are already being syndicated on some platforms. So that's number two. Number one, let me reiterate. Number one, subscribe, hit the bell of the YouTube channel. Number two, subscribe to the podcast, whatever platform you choose. All the links are in the descriptions. Unless you're listening on the podcast, then obviously you won't get a link to that. Or you're listening on the YouTube or watching on the YouTube channel, you obviously won't get a link to that. Number three is go to therealjoecrafts.com. Also a link in the description. Therealjoecrafts.com, go there. There will be a pop-up that says subscribe to the newsletter. Subscribe to it. Put your email in. Now, once we hit 75 subscribers on my YouTube channel, as of this recording, it is 37. So a little bit over double. So I want 38 more. 38 more subscribers. We hit 75 and, uh, and also those 37 also need to do the other two. I don't think they've done the other two. 
So 75 subscribers, I'm gonna pick one randomly, I'm gonna message you, I'm gonna ask you for screenshots to verify you've done those three things. And uh, if you're in the US, I will send you. Really dramatic. Anyway, thank you for watching and I hope that you enjoy and I'm excited to see who wins this.